Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're doing the MMA Contrarian Betting Breakdown for this Saturday, July 15th, where we basically uh, spend the week figuring out what the public is doing and what the pseudo sharps are doing and what the pseudo touts are doing and essentially fade them. Uh, it's essentially the way that I've been uh, analyzing stocks and sports and things like that for uh, longer than most of you have been alive. Essentially, the idea is that if everybody is on one particular narrative, in uh in an exhibition which has many ways uh, many different uh outcomes then that narrative is usually overvalued and likewise if everybody's on one side of a fight with a, with a narrative that's incredibly easy to tell then that side is probably overvalued similarly to the stock market if there's a stock out there that everybody agrees is the leader in the space that has strong management that has a strong product line with no debt and good financials it's probably overvalued um, and this is the way that you are contrarian with stocks it's the way you can be contrarian with sports uh, you know for all you people that bet on teams that just coming are coming off of 20 20 run victories or betting on pitchers coming off of perfect games or no hitters you know you have to change the way you think about these things you have to figure out what is being driven by recency bias and completely faded. We've been very, very fortunate uh, since we started MMA uh, that this approach is extremely strong with MMA. There's very few sports, at least in my, uh, my opinion, that is more conducive to an entire group of betters settling on one narrative than MMA. And I love doing these things later on in the week when once I've been able to gather all the content that I could. And uh, usually of the 12 to 13 fights, there are essentially 10 or 11 of them that are extremely strong contrarian plays. Now, what I will do, by the way, is I'm going to give I'm going to give something out every single fight just to be consistent. Obviously, that's not the greatest money management system in the world. And I'm also going to be betting literally everything that I recommend. And I'm going to be betting the same amount. And that's also not the greatest money management system in the world. But again, for consistency, that's what we're going to do. Um, and uh, for those of you who have not seen these breakdowns before, you have to get used to the fact that if you follow what I'm doing, you're going to be probably on the wrong, not the wrong side, on the opposite side of the majority of the industry. And I'm just kind of cool with that. It's just worked for me for a long time. And I can't promise you're going to win, but I do promise you will not be on the square side. I promise you that you will be getting, uh, I promise you're going to be getting value. No, I can't promise that, but you're certainly going to be uh, contrarian and it's going to be a lot more fun to root in this way. But even more to the point, I think it will turn you into, if you keep doing this, uh, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't drive you to bankruptcy into the lunatic asylum, it, it will definitely make you a sharper, uh, a sharper uh, uh, analyzer of all things wager. So let's just start with uh, Ashley Evan Smith versus Aline Perez. Ashley Evan Smith is 38 years old um, and she might not even be, uh, this might be just the, kind of the last fight in her contract. I mean, nobody's even know where, what she's been doing since her layoff. Um, you have Aline Perez, who is very young, very hungry. She's very active. Even though she lost her last fight to Stephanie Egger, you know, she was at, she tried to be active in that as well. And some of her other fights are, you know, have finishes and things like that. Uh, this is uh, just a real kind of an easy case of the younger, hungrier fighter with, quote unquote, that dog in her that essentially is being handed a free fight against someone who's probably on her way out. So we're going to take Ashley Evan Smith plus the 185. And we did do it for 180. Um, and I'm going to show you all my tickets at the end of this, but we're just going to be blasting through this with this type of analysis. Alex Munoz versus Carl Deaton. So Alex Munoz has just the, the the style matchup to end all style matchups in this fight. You have Munoz who, despite his layoff, is has an incredible wrestling base. Um, even in his last two fights where he did lose, he had multiple takedowns. And they're giving him the perfect matchup in Carl Deaton, who has poor takedown defense. And... In his last fight against Joe Selecki, he just got completely obliterated on the mat and route to submission. He's not even UFC material. And as a lot of, you know, very sharp people will tell you, styles make fights. So the fact that this is only Munoz minus 180 is kind of criminal here. I mean, he should be probably minus 500, right? So we'll take Carl Deaton plus the 155 for 180. Uh, Tyson Nam against Azat Maxim. Uh, 
this is not too contrarian a take only because I, you know, uh, I've heard a lot of different, different opinions on this. So this is one of those fights that you don't really have that kind of uh, anti-public leverage, but just to let you guys know, the side that I think has been ignored the most is honestly the maxim in round one side. I'm seeing this narrative that, that Tyson Nam is going to survive a little bit longer because he has quote unquote good takedown defense. Um, so I think that Azat Matsukam round one plus 200 is probably semi-contrarian play. It's not the, it's not as much of a lock as these freaking, this Ashley Evans Smith play, for example. Ashley Evans Smith's literally no chance to win. So we're taking her at 185. And, and Carl Deet, literally no chance to win. And we're taking him at 155. Uh, the Mazacom round one is just something to do because I want to bet every fight. So that's plus 200 in round one. We're doing that. Um, do I have to show you what these lines are? You'll just kind of have to trust me on this. I'll show you the tickets afterwards. So Evan Elder versus Gennaro Valdez. Um, for those of you who don't, didn't know, I mean, Elder was was really winning his last fight. They had him, I think, two to zero on all the judges' scorecards before an unfortunate doctor stoppage cost him that win. Um, so they they want to give him a fight that he can win. Uh, and they're giving him Gennaro Valdez, who is just completely hittable. I mean, he literally has no defense and very, very unsound technically. Elder could basically win this fight wherever this fight goes, and it's sort of almost like a fixed fight for him. So if that happens, we're going to lose because we took Gennaro Valdez plus the 250. Jack Della Maddalena versus Basile Hafez. There's no line on this one yet that we want to bet because um, I'm going to tell you what we are going to be betting. Uh, we're not going to be betting the money line, but what we're going to be doing is this. Um, so Jack Della, Mel Jack Della Maddalena, um, the, the, the narrative that's coming out of this fight is actually that Hafez is a wrestler that might make life a little bit more difficult on Jack D than people think. Um, so people that are betting Jack D in round one or might be in for a rude awakening when Hafez just kind of just lets it, you know, extends it a little bit. So the real sharp people, what they're doing is they're betting him actually in round two. Okay. Um, what, what the, now, if, if you're not, if you don't have it in you to do that, I don't know anybody that's going to be betting him in round three. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take Jack D in round three, whatever those odds are. Um, all right. Uh, Austin Lingo against uh, Costa. This, to me, I mean, Austin Lingo should probably be plus, be plus 300 here if you listen to what everybody's saying, right? And he's he's just basically a pure boxer who's not very well-rounded. All he has, he just kind of throws with heat, but but it's not, he's not really an MMA guy. He's more just kind of a raw boxer where Costa is just much more well-rounded. I mean, he's he has, uh, if, he did, if the striking is not going his way, he could go for takedowns. And it's just basically like a like probably a parlay piece just to take Costa and lay the minus two ten. It looks like free money, so we're going to take Lingo plus the one eighty. No idea how he's going to win. Probably has no chance, so we're going to lose. But we're taking him plus the one eighty. Stella Nunez versus Dudakova. So Nunez, she is a beast. Okay, now the problem with her is that she only has about a round and a half of cardio, but those first two rounds. I mean, she is dangerous. And not only that, but we've, we've listened, we've, we've seen this movie before. Dudakova, she's a, a Russian with, with grappling that's coming in to fight a kind of a UFC, I don't say veteran, but an established UFC fighter. This is just like that Petrovich fight from last week, right? Where Petrovich was undefeated, came out again against Luana Carolina as a big favorite. People thought she was going to take Carolina down and dominate her. And Carolina basically owned her the whole fight. So Nunez is an incredibly live dog here. And in a spe especially like early. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take Dudakova. We'll take Dudakova inside the distance um, to fade the narrative that the only way she's winning is by fighting off uh, Nunez and kind of gra grinding her way to a decision. So we are taking Dudakova um, inside the distance. I think it was plus 200. And I'll show you my tickets after we're done. Tucker Lutz against Melsic Bagdasarian. Um, Adversarian is a pure striker. So what Tucker Lutz has, and this is like the sharpest take of the week, like all throughout the industry, is that Tucker Lutz, even though he's not an expert wrestler, he is good enough and he's a smart enough guy that he is going to be going for these takedowns. It's Magnusarian. And so what he's going to be able to do is drag this fight out 
over the course of three rounds. Now, it's possible that Bagdasarian is just kind of too good striking anyway, but the, the chances that this goes early is almost zero, given the fact that that's the, the game plan that Tucker Lutz is going to be employing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Bagdasarian in round one. I think it's plus 400 or something like that, um, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, Terrence McKinney versus Nazim Sadikov. See, this is this is one of the easier ones you could ever imagine because this is fight is going to be a banger. And but more to the point, what's going to happen is Terrence McKinney, all of his win equity is the first round and a half. He's got about a round and a half of cardio, and he's going to be going for it. And not to mention the fact that he has been training with diff in different gyms. And from what you're, what the, the real sharp people are hearing from the trainers that he's really in good shape for this fight, okay? So he's really going to get after it. Now, if he runs out of gas, Sadikov is going to be taking over late. So the only way you can really bet this fight is McKinney early or Sadikov late. So we're going to take Sadikov in round one, uh, plus 200. Ottoman Azatar versus Francisco Prado. So... This, again, is another just stone-cold banger. You have two guys that are going to just basically stand in the middle and, and go after it. I mean, especially Azatar. Like, he, it, you know, just he most every fight that he's had is in the first round. His last fight, you know, he was basically exposed, like, being for being chinny, sort of. You know, uh, he was basically in a, he was in a fight with Matt Favola. And the narrative there was that Frivola, if he really wanted to win, was going to have to wrestle because no one wanted to stand and bang with Azatar, and he shouldn't. Turns out that Frivola you know, just clocked him anyway. So essentially, Azatar, he's basically been exposed as a fraud. Um, and they're bringing in Prado, who's 21 years old, really, really, you know, very, very aggressive. And essentially, the only way that Azatar is going to win is, is he could win in the first round. Okay, But if it gets out of the first round, Prado is certainly going to take over. So what did we do? Oh, why not? We took Azatar by decision, plus 750. Um, Norma Dumont versus Chelsea Chandler. There's really only two ways this fight goes. You have Norma Dumont, uh, you know, just very technical, just a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger, I guess. So maybe Dumont kind of grinds her way to a decision. Chelsea Chandler is... Her real path to victory is with her aggression. Like if you look at her inside the distance line, she's more favored to finish this fight than Dumont, even though Dumont is a minus 140 favorite. And that should tell you something. So what we're going to do is we were torn here. I, I didn't know whether I wanted to play Dumont inside the distance, which nobody is playing, or Chandler by decision, which nobody is playing. And unfortunately for the Dumont side, the last thing I saw before um, this uh, breakdown was a podcast where two different people said that Dumont by uh, KO was the best value on the card. So we can't do that either. So it's Chandler by decision plus one. Uh, actually, she's, I think, plus 300 or something like that. Uh, I'll show I'll show you the actual tickets. Uh, Jariah versus Park. I really had no opinion here. So I think I just bet this. I just bet this fight to um, to go over, I suppose. Um, again, this is just one of those fights that everybody's, there's no real big consensus one way or the other now home versus buena silva this what i always do in the last fight is try to make our money back because we're going to be going 0 and 12 i mean there's no way any of these fights are going to come in the way we said um like ashley evan smith that's really throwing money in the trash can 38 years old against the younger hungry fighter uh, carl deaton in a complete stylistic disaster against muñoz that has no shot um I guess Maxum could win round one, maybe. But Valdez is not beating Elder. I mean, no chance. Um, to, to Magdalena, he's going to be taking a round three? No, so we're losing that one. Uh, Lingo hasn't won a fight since the Eisenhower administration. He's not winning. Um, if anybody's going to finish this Nunez fight, it's going to be Nunez. So the Dudakova fight, the Dudakova fight inside the distance is awful. Uh, Bagdasarian, his entire path to victory is going to be kind of probably a little, you know, just grinding out a, a kind of a striking-based decision late, especially given the fact that Tucker Lutz is going to be going for these takedowns. So Bagdasarian round one is literally just like, just may as well put, put, put that ticket in the shredder. Um, McKinney early or Sadikoff late, any other bet is just literally, is. I don't even know why I'm even logging in. So we're taking Sadikoff round one, just 
literally rip up your tickets. Uh, Azatar by decision. I mean, you got to be a freaking lunatic to take that one. So that's dead. Um, Chandler by decision. I mean, she's awful. I don't know why I'm doing that one. Uh, I guess Park has a chance to go the distance just because I have nothing else to do, but probably going to go 0 12. So what we need to do is find something in the home silver fight where um, where you get more than 12 to 1. So basically, uh, you have Holly Holm, and this this Holly Holm fight is like any other Holly Holm fight, just going to drag her into deep waters and win a very boring decision if you want to pick her. Silva is not winning the decision. Silva, her path to victory is probably going to be by submission. Um, so, But unfortunately, none of those things give us the odds that we need. So, But the good thing is that those are the popular takes. So what we did is we took Holly home to finish in round three, plus I think 22 to one. Um, that will get us all our money back. And it is the place that no one is playing. Okay. I think there might be some Uber contrarians that might try to play home round one or maybe even round two. And there are some geniuses who might play for that grinding late finish of Holly home round four and five. But I don't think that anybody is playing her in round three. So we are going to do that. Um, so let me show you my tickets if they will let me. Uh, it looks like it will not. Let oh open. Let's see, there it is. So here it is. R Holly Holm, round three, plus 22 to one. Uh, Duraev to go the distance, minus 115. Chandler by decision, plus 300. Bagdasarian, round one, plus 450. Lingo, plus 180 in the money line. Azatar by decision, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, plus 750. Sadikov, round one, 225. Valdez money line, plus 250. Dudakova inside the distance, plus 150. Mass come round one plus 200. Carl Deaton plus 155. And that's, I, I don't know which, which of these bets are worse. Deaton plus 155 or Ashley Evan Smith plus 185. I mean, they should, these guys this really should be plus 800. But we have them. Maybe we should cash this out. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. So again, that, that's the breakdown. That's my takes. Those are my bets. Uh, again, I'm sorry if you're telling me you're going to go 0 13, but. It's the way it goes. It's better that than just playing what everybody else plays. Good luck, everybody.